everybody. It's a different talk and keep a first introduction about myself. My name is Sun Hui, and uh, I'm an advanced uh, development scientist in the ASLAB, advanced uh, career manufacturing and technology center. So I just joined the RPC like three months before. Uh, I worked in NDU, uh, Robert Research Center, for two years. And uh, I'm very lucky to uh, join the ESTA Industrial Research Programming, uh, led by Professor Marcelo. So in the past two or three years, I've been continuous working in ROS and uh, ROS Industrial. So I also in my spare time for fun the company. Uh, so uh, we really see a great opportunities uh, in, in this domain. So uh, and this is a bright future for also the developers, uh, startup builders, makers, uh, academia research. So today I'd like to take this opportunity to share uh, my knowledge and some information in this domain. So the presentation title of the day is how open source robotics is accelerating our research and innovation. So. Before talking about open source robotics, and I'd like to take the Linux uh, in the computer industry and uh, Android in the smartphone industry as an example to justify how open source uh, is, is important. It's a fundamental change of our life in the last 10 or 20 years. So this figure actually shows some data that um, uh, nowadays also there are only 50 5.5 signature share in the desktop uh, computer for Linux, but uh, most, almost half of the server run Linux. Uh, and uh, for smartphone, as you can see in this big in, in the last uh, eight to ten years, uh, 88 signature market share uh, of the smartphone already running Android. So by the way, Linux and Android are open source projects. So, in totally, the Android uh, uh, system hit like uh, uh, 37 percentage of market share in the whole uh, uh, operation system. So, this is uh, quite a major story to show uh, how the open source is quite important in, for product and for, for innovation. So, open, with, today we're talking about open source robotics, uh, the two sides. Uh, hardware and, so and the open source software. So the open source hardware is uh, already played a key role in the past uh, years uh, to help our develop to our companies to build the robot faster, cheaper, and better. Good example are affordable, uh, like three D printers, like Carter, and the open electronic kits like Android Raspberry Pi. We use it's very cheap, uh, easy to use, and it's open source, so different manufacturers can have different version. Uh, all this uh, design PCB board already online. You can even design your own Arduino board, have your own uh, developer environment. So for the open source software part, is uh, the open CV already widely used in industrial and non-industrial. So it's quite successful package in the computer vision area. Uh, Gazebo is part, is kind of a dominant uh, simulator in, in for robotics now. So it's also uh, a part of the uh, OSI contribution. So ROS actually is a dominant uh, uh, open source software for programming robots. Uh, the other one job for using ROS is uh, you don't need to reinvent the views. This is the core technology, core concept. So your works will be out on the success for a lot of people's work. So it's very quick and easy to build your own application. So just a little bit about uh, uh, ROS. Probably most of you have heard of it. And uh, uh, James just did a very good uh, explanation about this fantastic uh, uh, project. But I'd like to also uh, explain a little bit about uh, ROS. So ROS is kind of an uh, open source uh, operation system for robots. It's originally from Stanford, so uh, project. And then the Villa Garage is a kind of incubation center in Silicon Valley. 
So the tremendous work helping to build the ROS a kind of uh, uh, widely used uh, software, open source software in this community. Uh, uh, and the, the core concept of the uh, ROS is <coughs> it helps you to break, break a complex software uh, to small pieces. Uh, take an example, if you want to build a robot, service robot, you have different kind of modules, motion planning, perception, uh, task generation, all this can all these kind of things you cannot get by of your own self. So you probably need to take other people's work, modify the ingredient in your own uh, robotics. So uh, ROS is encouraging all the people to reuse other people's work. Uh, of course, their license. Uh, always there, I will talk about that in later of my presentation. So ROS provides a kind of uh, framework, course, and the interface for distributing development. So for one project, you probably can have a uh, contribute in the different uh, corner of the world. So in generally, uh, for our community developers, we put our source code on GitHub. Uh, so uh, we collaborate together and uh, uh, and build this project. So this is a, a fundamentally new way how we build the project and uh, uh, make this stable and reliable. Uh, so in one sentence, the growth is the planning uh, plus tools plus uh, different capabilities. And what's important is uh, this uh, ecosystem behind of it. They are like uh, thousands of developers. We have a weak pedal, uh, so you can ask, ask, ask questions and they will be expert to answer your questions. Uh, so just some data and the figures show that how great the world cities in the past nine years uh, it is growing pretty fast. As you can see uh, in these two figures and the data so in the past 10 years, uh, the top line of, our, of the program is like 40 million land record. So this is equal to like uh, 1,400 uh, authors uh, programming at the same time in the past 10 years. So they are like uh, 4 million significant land of course over there. And this uh, to get an idea how big this project is, if we say it's a project running by a company or a research group, this is like 1,236 percent year of development. And this is like 137 employees work full time in the past nine years. So this we have never seen any robots project or software project that you put so many human hours and time uh, uh, in it. So this is great. Since ROS is originally used for service robot, uh, because from the Stanford project they have the PR tool, personal service robot. Uh, but the ROS industry actually extended the advanced capability of ROS and the, to new manufacturing applications. So it's more reliable, stable, and we have uh, uh, industrial players to come in to contribute it. So the ROS industrial factors can do, for example, collision avoidance project generation, automated adapted to a past generation, this, had, this is the software that the road manufacturer like Kukai will be, uh, have never brought before. So they are, the instrument is good at doing fixed uh, pass, repeating task, but they are not good for uh, collision avoidance trajectory, even instrument calibration or it. So ROS in the show bring this new capability to the traditional industrial robots. And this is a requirement raised from Industrial 4.0, which means robots should be flexible, should be able to deal with uh, low volume, highly mixed task. So I think the growth industry will play a great role in the future. Uh, the other process, like finishing a welding, this traditional one, application robotics process, still roles can play a, a great role. Uh, and we 
already have several successful demos. So there are new areas like aerospace, logistics, even healthcare domain, it can be uh, used for, for, for the development. Uh, the, the growth industry actually running in a consulting uh, form. So we put all the developer, academic research, and the key industry players, big companies, uh, SMEs, together for the consulting. So the real application problems can really feedback from the customer, the have the developer, and the academic research to uh, revise the core and solve the uh, bring the gap between research results and the industrial applications. So we we're, we're very lucky. So we did a tremendous work in the past two years. Uh, we have the uh, Ross Industry Consulting Asia Pacific branch uh, set up in, in ARPC. So this is partnership with uh, uh, NTU. And uh, we just uh, will officially kick off this consultant uh, from next week. So we will bring big companies, SMEs, and also developers together to promote ROST and ROST industrial education in the Asian Pacific area. So just some successful story how ROST is accelerating our innovation and, the res uh, and the, uh, research. The first picture probably most people know that this is double challenging. So like 16 members, teams in the dark challenging the programming, the sophisticated the humanoid role in ROS. So only ROS can handle so many technical details. So there are millions of lines for the to uh, control such a uh, difficult or uh, complex humanoid with like 20, 30 degrees freedom to climbing ladders. Uh, open the bubbles and uh, solve different uh, uh, dis disaster areas scenario. Uh, the second picture is the after big charging. I went to the. I was lucky to went to uh, Seattle in 2015. Uh, Amazon hosted a, a the robot picking challenge over there. We formed a team in NTU. So we participate the charging. They are like. 20 teams over there, 80% uh, is just they are using robots to program in the robot. So this is combined with vision, 3D vision to to perception and distinguish the objects put into a, a shelf. You need to, to pick the right object and put it into orbit. So motion planning task uh, optimization. They give you like 15 minutes and the different objects have different points. Some are quite easy to pick, some are very difficult, deformable, transparent object, very challenging to perception and grasping. Um, so the third one, actually, there are some very successful startups and companies using ROS to, as a software to deliver products. Because people always question, are ROS stable or reliable enough to be implemented in the products? I think the answer now is yes, because the, the, the best robots, these people are the core member of Velo Garage, they fund the company and uh, uh, invent these two robots uh, for logistical uh, applications. Because the e-commerce company have a very strong demand for uh, logistic robots in China and in the US. So they are doing some testing in, in, in the warehouse. Uh, this one is a kind of a hotel service robot uh, for delivering objects to, from the reception area to the, to the door. So when the robot will reach uh, your door, he will automatically give you a call, and they will, you can open the door and pick up your objects. So you don't need to go down, uh, wait time for the elevator to pick up uh, and uh, 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 simple things, the robot can help you to do. Uh, this is the AMA. Actually, this is a local startup company. Uh, when I was in you, we co-founded this company. So we built the robot in our dormitory. So we took like half a year to build the robot with only two engineers. So now it's quite a success. We get a tremendous support from the government. We just received the POV grant from Spring. Also, we have received uh, uh, 
uh, angel investor in local and the sound investor from China. So uh, the story is saying that the robots making robots is not too difficult as we beat uh, like five or ten years ago. You need a group of people. Uh, you need to spend a lot of time uh, to, to do it. This robot is most of components off the shelf. All in the software is made by ourselves. So we use lots to build the capability on the work of other people. So it's very easy and quick to build. Like John said, he took one month to build his own robot. I think it's possible, right? Uh, so actually, this slide is a uh, talk I'm in in the Star. It's uh, the, the the theme is from lab to market. So today I also like to. Sh Share some story. Uh, how? What's the gap? And what are things we need to consider about uh, using robots uh, as kind of open source software? The first issue is uh, the licensing and the IP issues. The many licensing in ROS, the BSD license, MIP license, Apex two license, maybe make you confusing. Uh, but if you use a back to OM my class and you'll be very happy because it's uh, allowed you to modify it. Uh, you can use the software even for commercial use. For example, your startup company, you make a work, you make a, 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 a product. Uh, your software is uh, if you're using a back to lessons, then it's okay. There's just some regulations that you cannot use uh, his company name to promote your product. But if you <coughs> have for some packages which licenses GPO or AGOA, <coughs> your lawyer probably make you cry because this license, uh, they say, you need to open source your, your core work because you use the, the, the software. So you need to be very cautious uh, when you would choose to use other people's work, especially for commercial use purposes. Uh, also, there are some IP issues you need to 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 to, to, to include in your license file before you make the open source or embed it in a product. Probably other people will sue you if you use a, a illegal uh, license. Uh, about the production, since we have a product, we probably need to think about, uh, I have a demo, how I transfer this demo to a bunch of products? How can you maintain all these things if you have uh, 100, 1,000 customers? Because the open source uh, software has some disadvantage. Different packages rely on other packages, like in industry. So if other packages have some upgrade, and the other packages don't have, there will be some independence problem, and then it's very difficult to maintain uh, this software package and make it reliable. Uh, but the good news is uh, we, nowadays we have like a CI tools, continuous integration. So uh, I will recommend everybody when you're developing a ROS package, you start to use these uh, tools. It makes you continuously. Uh, update uh, and harmoniously uh, 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 integrated with other packages. Uh, of course, there are also some testing and production uh, 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 tools like uh, DOC. So, DOC is a container technology that you can package everything uh, in, the, in a huge package. So, this package can be implemented on different platforms. Uh, there will be no problems. So this kind of cloud-based technology, uh, set of that technology. Uh, also, you can use uh, Jenkins tools uh, to automatically build your source code. For example, you can link the Jenkins with your GitHub account. So when you change some many changes of your source code, and the, this all are automatically build and tested. For, for your end user or for your customer. Uh, for people who want to do uh, industrial IoT, uh, Ubuntu has a, a new version called the Ubuntu Core. So all your software will be 
the web uh, as a snappy, so it's not a Debbie binary. So it's a kind of snappy. They use the container technology. It's like uh, a sheet have a lot of containers. So, so there will be no conflict between different packages. Uh, you just do an upgrade. Your device get away and your customer will keep update. And if update fails, they can roll back. So this is quite reliable. Uh, and uh, each to maintaining, upgrading uh, customer care. So there are also new business model. Because nowadays the robot, oh, we, 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 we you are in the intelligent hardware, is uh, slowly moving to pure hardware by providing service, content, and they even build an ecosystem. So if your customer cannot afford a robot, for example, it costs like uh, 30,000 K, 40,000 K, the customer cannot afford, you can do a leasing model. So you provide the robot and the other maintenance service kind of service. So if you do a pure software, you probably can consider about how to put your software in cloud, for example, in Amazon, uh, AWS, they have uh, Elastic Computing in Lambda. Uh, so this software, the same package can be shared by uh, hundreds or ten thousands of customers using existing uh, software API. So this is a kind of a business model. It's very easy to, for you to maintain one software than maintaining software packages installed on your device. Uh, also, the, the pay as a service for this kind of things. So all this technology, I think, is, is, is moving very fast. Uh, we all talking about uh, not robots anymore. Nowadays, we are talking about the cloud connecting robots. The software will be running in the cloud. The, the robot itself can be very cheaper in the future because it has don't have so much high computation power. All this uh, high level uh, scanning, point the cloud processing or machine learning can be done in the cloud and can only be done in the cloud because as a maker or developer, you probably can do some demo about the machine learning, but you cannot surpass what the game did, like a Google did or Amazon did. You probably need to use the API to process in one image uh, took from your robot and then feed back the comment to control the robot. So bear in mind, so if you have some kind of application, you probably need to think about uh, how to use Artcube's work or how to uh, find a better way to deploy it and uh, send it to your customer. So I think last, uh, just do some setting for uh, a um, event. So next week we have a second Rose Industrial Asia Pacific workshop, uh, which is hosted by ARPC. So we we'll call for registration now. Uh, I'm bringing our colleagues, bring some players. Uh, this year we have uh, invited a lot of very nice uh, uh, speakers from US, from from Ross or OSI. Our Ross uh, Southwest Research Institute is the American consortium for Ross Industrial. We also have some important speaker from NASA about the uh, Robonut and also some robot uh, companies from Denmark and Europe. So there is a very state of art information service session. And also in, we, in the RTC, we have a very nice. Uh, uh, we rented a uh, more than ten very nice demo uh, about the robot robotic process and also ROS and ROS industry application. So I encourage you guys to to do the registration uh, and participate in this event. Uh, I think this is my contact information. So if you have any question, interested about the ROS ROS industry, uh, please contact with me. Yes, thanks. How's uh, ROSI adapting on uh, ROS 2.0?
I mean, are there any uh, development at the moment also? Uh, Rust two point zero. I, I have uh, attended the two session last year in the uh, in Seoul about the Rust comp. So they mentioned about the Rust uh, point zero. They will release a better version uh, in Q three or Q four. But uh, main many works are still in the Rust one point zero. So Rust in but uh, we are keep watching it. So also for us, it's a learning journey uh, because Rust point two point zero has a major revision because it's based on BBS and uh, there will be no Rust core. Uh, it can be also uh, running an embedded system for real time application. So this is actually this is the good news for Rust industry. Because for industrial applications, sometimes we really need real-time uh, control of the motors and the robots. So we are keep watching it. But uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe the people from yeah, uh, OSF they will share this information. Yeah. Any other questions? Any more questions for Dr. Liang? <coughs> okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liang. So, uh,